The U.S. blanketed the area with flyers and posters showing pictures of the two sailors and offering a $20,000 reward for information leading to their safe return. There is a tremendous amount of effort going on to find them, to search, uh, and beyond that, I, wouldn't, I, I can't discuss any additional details. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who was visiting Afghanistan at the time, called it an unusual circumstance. The two sailors, members of a team training Afghans, left their base at Camp Julian near Kabul in an SUV for the relatively short drive to Camp Eggers. Yet their badly shot up vehicle was found 80 miles south of Kabul. Why they strayed so far and why they drove into Taliban-controlled territory by themselves, a blatant violation of security procedures, remain unknown. A statement posted on a Taliban website said they ambushed the SUV in an attempt to capture the sailors alive. When the two men fought back, the Taliban opened fire, killing one but capturing the other alive. The only other American serviceman known to be in enemy hands is Specialist Bo Bergdahl, who walked away from his outpost 13 months ago and has since been seen only in Taliban videos. I'm scared. Um, I'm Scared I won't be able to go home. CBS newsman Jerry Van Dyke, who was held captive by the Taliban for 45 days, can tell you exactly what it feels like. You're constantly afraid the door is going to open up, and then that door is going to be a man with a black turban, and he's going to hold a rifle, and he's going to take you outside, and they're going to cut off your head. Van Dyke is living proof the Taliban don't always kill their prisoners. But even with the best of outcomes, it is a harrowing experience. Russ? David Martin at the Pentagon. Thank you.